So this is chapter two, uh, talking about financial statements, taxes, and cash flows. So in this particular chapter, this will be somewhat of a rehash review of uh, your pre-rec accounting course. So we're gonna go through, talk about the statement of cash flows, uh, the balance sheet, the income statement, and then we'll talk about some legislation that has been passed recently that could impact what we see on a company's financial statements. So we're gonna start out with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. This was passed in late 2017 and enacted in uh, 2018. Now, obviously when you see something that says um, the tax cuts, you obviously know that we cut income tax rates for corporations. We cut it from a progressive tax structure uh, where tax rates range between 15 and 39%, depending on the, the corporation's income bracket. But what we end up doing is we reduce it to a flat 21% so that every company is going to pay a flat 21% on the income that they earn. Now, aside from that, we also did some different things uh, with regards to how companies can depreciate an asset. So usually when a company purchases a a, an asset that is usually long-term or, or what we call fixed, such as a piece of property, a piece of land, uh, equipment. What we can do is we can depreciate that asset, which allows us allows the corporation to reduce uh, certain expenses from one year to the next on the income statement. Well, what we end up doing is uh, instead of uh, depreciating it over time, uh, we have given corporations the, op the option of depreciating the entire purchase price in the first year. Um, and you might say, well, what's the impact of this? Well, what it's going to do is when you depreciate the entire purchase price within the first year, you're going to incur a very large depreciation expense, which is going to increase expenses on the income statement. But at the same time, as you know from your pre-rec accounting course, depreciation is a non-cash charge so if the depreciation expense goes up, the non-cash charge also goes up. And when we look at the statement of cash flows, we're gonna add back a larger amount of depreciation, which is going to increase the cash flow amount. At the same time, we've limited the tax deductibility of interest expense. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, corporations, when they want to borrow money, they issue corporate bonds. When they pay interest payments to their bondholders, uh, that's an interest expense. Uh, just like individuals, certain interest expense is tax deductible for corporations. Uh, think about it. When it comes to individuals, if you have mortgage interest, so if you're paying interest on a house that you are uh, buying, you can deduct that interest expense. So mortgage interest is something that individuals can deduct on their taxes to reduce their taxable income. Just like individuals, can deduct student loan interest. If you are paying off your student loans in a given year, the interest that you end up paying off in the given year, you can use that interest to reduce your taxable income. Same thing with corporations. The interest expense that they pay to bondholders, they can use it as a tax deduction to lower their taxable income so they pay less in taxes. So ultimately, the question comes down to how would these changes impact how companies operate? Well, it's pretty obvious that lowering corporate income taxes is going to increase taxable income because corporations are now paying less in taxes. So they probably will have more money to distribute in the form of dividends or retain and plow back into the company. Likewise, if there's less of a benefit in terms of having interest expense because it's we're limiting the tax deductibility uh, provision, chances are companies are probably going to issue less debt and then if companies now have the option of depreciating an asset in the first year instead of over time, this could mechanically um, increase expenses on the income statement, but at the same time, it could increase the non-cash charge on the cash flow statement. Okay, so again, what we're gonna be talking about in this particular chapter are some some of the financial statements out there, the balance sheet, the income statement, statement of cash flows. Um, and as it says up here, you know, financial statements are a key source of information, all right? Who is it a source of information to? Not only is it a source of information to the company, because the company would like to see how they're doing in a particular year, it's also a source of information primarily for investors, all right? And investors need to know uh, what they see uh, in terms of the financial statements uh, which we often refer to as book value.
Okay, so typically when we see something that's on a, fi a, a financial statement, that typically represents historical book value at that time. And then there's something called market value. Market value is, you know, what an asset would uh, yield if it was sold in the open market, okay? Um, just like when it comes to uh, the company stock price, what's the market value of the company stock price? Well, it's basically uh, built off supply and demand. And then we'll talk about some of the differences between income and cash flow and why those are different. Okay, so we'll stop there and when we come back, we will pick up starting off with the balance sheet, talking about, uh, you know, the balance sheet is a way for us to summarize financial statements in the form of what the company owns and what the company owes in terms of liabilities.